thanks for tuning in again. If you've been keeping up with the channel these last couple videos, you know we've been adding a few things to the car today. So this will be the last one for the day, luckily, because it's getting hot in here. So we'll get the car jacked up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go back, check out the last couple videos. You can see what we've been doing. If you like what you see, thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming up next. And yeah, without further ado, we'll flip you around and show you what else I got for the car. All right, so today we got more Steeda parts that go onto the front of the car, and that's the Extreme G-Track K brace. You can see, looks like a K, that's why they call it the K brace. They also have an Extreme G-Track brace, which is pretty much the same thing, except instead of a tube, it's more like a long rectang rectangled piece of steel, and you lose the two arms. That's like the toned down version, this is the extreme K brace where you gain the two extra arms. You'll see where it all ends up under there once I get the car up. But I actually got this from a buddy of mine for free. He took it off his old car when he traded it in. So it's got a little bit of nicks and scratches here, but overall it's in good shape. I just shot it with a little bit of paint on the ends because the car came from Ontario, and if you know anything about Ontario, it's Rust City, because they like to use all the salt they can find on the roads out there when it gets cold, which is safe, but if you're going to be driving a car like this in the winter, it will eat away at everything that it can get at. So, Like I said, shot it with a little bit of paint, and I had it for a while, but the parts I was waiting on was actually the new hardware, from Steeda because taking these ones out not only do these little spacers you kind of crush you'll see under there it gets crushed a little bit it's a major pain to get those out plus because this is older it actually didn't come with these other spacers or these or wa not washers but little clamps for the other side of that so I'll open it all up and I'll show you how it goes together and how it works. All right, so if you buy this kit new, you get the brack or the brace. You get two of these with the little Allen head screw on there. The reason that's like that is because it actually goes inside here. You can see that side's bigger. So when this is inside, the head of the bolt will actually go in when you tighten it. And you get four nuts, two for those bolts, two for this. And these little washers, which I'm assuming go on there afterwards because they're the same size. The reason I say assuming is because this is actually the only video that I, well, that will be on YouTube. I can't find any with this whole new set. It's all older cars and pretty much... This side is, on the old videos, is just these two bolts for there. Like it didn't come with this stuff, the washer, or anything. You just had your spacers, your nut, and then on this side, there in the car, you'll see when we're under there, this bolt, like how it sticks out here, actually is to thread onto a nut that was on the car from factory. So... 18 and up, I believe, doesn't have that anymore. That's why this is the new hardware kit when you order this brace now. So if you have an older Mustang and you're looking to get this, like 15 to 17, you don't have to worry about these two nuts or, or this little aluminum spacer here. But if you have 18 and up, they don't have that bolt anymore. So I'm assuming this goes there just to stop some of the wiggle. And then, like, it doesn't look like there's much thread left, but once that's in, that will thread pretty much perfectly with the nut. Because if you look, they're almost the same size. So this is just to kind of make up the difference in the, the length of the bolt, because then they can just make one kit. And like I said, if you have the screw that happens to be on the car, you can just thread this in, you're good to go. If not, you got this little spacer here, just keeps it all nice, flat, and even when you're done under the car. So that's why I'm going to do that part. This side, I'm going to use obviously these bolts. I'm going to put a washer. That will go under. I'll slide this over just to show you. 
I'm basically going to have it up there like this. That will go there. Then because we have four of these, I'm going to put one on there. Then I'll go through the rod. Then you have your little spacer here, which it doesn't go on like this. So that'll be in there. But that's to stop it from squishing. And then on the top, this will be on the top of the thing later on. And then you have your nut. So that's basically how it will look under the car. Some people put the bolt down. Some people put it up. I'm putting it up because I'm not sure how far, like once this is tightened down, I'm not sure how far this bolt will actually stick up. And when this is under the car, it's the new lowest point of your car. Whether you're lowered or not, this is going to hit on anything before your exhaust, before anything. This is going to hit the ground. So we'll see how much stuff we start bottoming out with on this. I'm not sure how far down exactly it will drop, but if you look at the space of this, part of it does go in the, in the little frame under the car but it might still be down just a little bit. So hopefully it's not too bad. But once we get her in there, we'll go for a drive and make sure it all works. But basically that's what I'm gonna do that side. And this is how I'm gonna do that side. Put the bolts in. This little guy, the reason I say it goes like that is because if you look, it's pretty much, it's exact, right? It's just a extension. So we'll see, maybe I won't end up using these at all. I'll see how it fits under the car, but for now, We'll get under there and we'll see what okay, we so do. Okay, so what I meant earlier by how the car used to have a threaded nut on here already, you can see this is the front of the car. This is uh, Ford's race that I was talking about. You can see the whole thing here. But basically, you got a hole here and then another hole here. Sorry if it's a little close up, but basically if you look up in there, you guys can see that hole. That's where your nut will go up top. And basically that hole used to be threaded. So you could put that piece in, just turn the little Allen screw or Allen bolt and it would tighten down. But the, I believe it's 2018 and up don't have that anymore. They have the hole, but they don't have the nut. So you gotta get the new kit, put the nut on top. And then basically if you follow your frame here it bolts into the second hole that's where the other half goes and the bigger hole is where you fish that spacer with the wire through there so when you put the bolt in and then when you tighten this down it's going to crush it a little bit and that's why i said we couldn't get those spacers out of the other car because it was squished and we couldn't get it out so new hardware's here should bolt on just fine all right, so one issue I found right off the bat is basically, like I said, these little spacers, they get fed through this hole. You push them down and they line up. So when you tighten your bolt here, this doesn't get flattened. But because this is all stamped, you feel inside, you guys can't see it, but it's not quite broken off. There's a chunk of metal in there. So I got a little screwdriver and just pry in there i might need a bigger one even just to break the little it's basically just this circle cut out and they fold it up there instead of actually breaking it right off so you can't get your plate all the way in and there's two there's one on this side and one on that side so i guess when it clamps they just go opposite ways or something so one more step you got to do before you can bolt this baby on there <laughs> what i meant you can see that's the little piece of stamped steel that was in there. It's basically sitting in there like this and the top one's like that. So just get your screwdriver in there. You can see the little scratch is where I hit it. Just crank it over and it snaps right off. And then now when you put this guy in there, oops, you can Eat them through and then if you look in the hole all right so the stamped steel is out and I was trying to fish this through but it's still just slightly too big because I guess when they 
squish those two pieces out or stamp the pieces out it does kind of squish it down a bit and that is obviously made for the width that it's supposed to be so I couldn't get it to line up so what I did is I just grabbed a file and I filed down the side don't get anything too crazy just get a little nice fine file so it doesn't look too ugly and basically I just rub it back and forth really fly really fast you don't need a lot off of there you just need enough to clear even if you can just get it to look like it's starting just jam a screwdriver in there or something and give it a crank and you'll get her in she's there. in you can see it is filed down in there a little bit like I said I didn't go too nuts but just get her in there bolt goes through then when you tighten around here it doesn't sandwich it it'll stop once it gets to the spacer this little guy you can either cut it off or just bend it and fold it in there after I'll probably snip mine off or maybe leave it about an inch and then tuck it up in there just in case one day you need to get it back out you can just get a pair of pliers or something on there give it a yank and then hopefully you can get it back out it's easier said than done because that was actually stuck in there when I took this off my friend's car. Alright guys, there you have it. It's in. I don't have it tightened up yet, but that's how it sits. You can see I still got to trim the little spacer handle thing off. but Put the bolts upwards, nuts on top. What I did, put those two in first because I don't know if this one, like I said, it was used. I don't know if it's bent or what. But it doesn't line up perfectly with the hole here. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get them in. But just give it a little wiggle and you'll get it. Get the nuts on there. And same with that. Those go in pretty easy. You can see spacer in the middle like I said. There's another one up top. And then the nut. Crank it all down. And basically those are 22 mil. I got my socket here. And then these are a T60 bit, which is this guy here. I have a whole set, but the 60 is actually very hard to find. Even if you go to the stores and buy like single ones, it usually only goes to 50. So I ended up finding a whole set of these. You can see you can put on a ratchet, but basically... You need a T60, otherwise I believe it's a 10 or a 12 mil bolt. If you find a bolt, just go to the store, buy a nut and a bolt. The head will fit the same size as this, and then just pretend you're cranking the bolt tight. And it will tighten it right up for you. So here's the little kit that I found. It's the only one that I could find with the actual T60 in it. You can see it goes 10 all the way up your 60 and then you get three little different size Phillip heads screwdrivers as well might come in handy one day so figured to get it little maximum mastercraft so limited lifetime warranty if anything breaks you bring it back so there you go guys one. all tightened down it says between 55 and 60 foot pounds so not super super tight but it's snug and you can see here that's what I mean, how the bolt head goes inside the brace. So crank those down. Nuts up top. Um, long tube headers. A lot of people ask in the comments when I looked online, does this work with long tubes? And I know with the shadow there, it doesn't look like there's much room. But there is plenty of room to get long tubes on there. The only thing is, it fits pretty snug up to the oil pan so I'm gonna say when we change the oil I don't know if you guys watched the last video but when you pull that plug it's gonna go puking out all over the K brace most likely but it is what it is this should help with the handling quite a bit the other thing I wanted to mention is in there I did put those little aluminum spacers like I said and if you look how close that is if you didn't have those in your brace would definitely be up against the frame so I'm assuming I did it the right way but let me know if you think differently I don't know in the 15 to 17s if this this whole piece maybe is different I don't know but it seems to work for how I did it so 
we'll get her off the jack stands and take her for a drive and see if we can feel any difference. So here we are a few days later, the kit's been on and I am actually very impressed. I wasn't expecting such a small part to make such a big difference, but it's hard to explain and it's hard to show on video, obviously, but when you're cornering, just your everyday driving feels the same. Like I said, the kit or the car had Ford's version of this on there already. So every day, you know, just normal turning, taking a corner, that all feels the same. But at high speeds before this was on, not that it felt like the car was gonna, you know, go full Mustang or anything, but when you gave her a bit of gas under the corners, it kinda, you had to catch yourself once in a while. But with this, now when you're turning, she kinda, it feels like the car almost stays flat instead of rolling through the corners. It's, the best way I can explain it is kinda like a Hot Wheels car. When you take a corner in a Hot Wheels car, they don't do this turns the corner right so it definitely makes a big difference and some people were or people around here anyway the video's not out yet but they were asking why I bothered with this piece because it's kind of like I said there's a part on the car but one of the reasons I got it is it's it works the same way basically as your strut tower for stiffening anyways anyways so if you're car isn't the performance back you don't have the piece underneath and most of the time it doesn't come with the strut tower either so if you get this it's kind of stiffening it in the same way the strut tower would so you're kind of getting best of both worlds in a case and then for me smart guy parked here around a corner on the side of the road but anyways for me if one day or when one day we supercharge or turbocharge or whatever we decide to do the car most of the time you end up losing that strut tower brace up top just to make room for everything that's going on under the hood so they recommend or Steeter recommends anyway if you get this you're kind of you are eliminating the top but you're basically just relocating it underneath plus you're getting the benefits of the extra handling so it's kind of the best of both worlds, like I said. So highly recommended. We're gonna get up to the little twisty turnies here in a sec, and maybe I'll flip around once I'm through there. There's a little less traffic in the other direction. And like I said, it's gonna be hard to see and kind of visualize it through the video, but we'll try to give her a little bit through the corners. Hopefully we don't catch up to the traffic too quickly, and we'll see how she does. All right, guys, we got her in sport mode. Hopefully we don't catch up to people too quick here, but we'll give her a little bit now that we're at the twisties. You can see. forgot to mention in the video is I did say this is the new lowest point on the car and definitely it is the average speed bumps I've been going over like I got some in the complex here it does fine you don't notice it but there's a couple of those really high short ones around and before if I was going really slow I could make it without hitting now 
when you go over and you get that initial bump it just you just hear it it's not like a big crunch into the ground or anything like that but you can hear it just get it just that little bit and same with there's a few roads around here where they got like those long dips so if you're going too fast you know when you come up the other side you might not that you're airborne but you kind of float feels like you're floating for a minute and when you come down this was going pretty fast mind you the speed limit you're probably fine but we were going pretty quick and then the initial drop the car doesn't bottom out like the suspension is fine but having said that part's a little lower same thing you just get that initial little scrape you can hear it scrape it's not that it's like you know destroying the underbody of the car or crunching down with the full weight of the car or anything like that that's not it but you do just skim it so not horrible but if you're scared of bottoming out or maybe you live in an area where there's lots of up and downs just something to consider when you install well guys it. that'll do it for this video hopefully you enjoyed the install little road test we did we did just order a couple more parts for the steeda stop the hop kit in the back so stay tuned for that those installs will be coming up like always if this helped you out at all or you like the video you don't want to miss the rest thumbs up and subscribe and we'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching